welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in the month of April. Every month I feel like the month flies by and then I look back at the stack of books I read that month and I'm like, oh my gosh, I read that this month. That feels like it was so long ago. So some of those honestly might be a little fuzzy for me already at this point, which is like the challenge of wrap ups all the time is looking back at the whole month and remembering exactly how you felt about the books. Luckily I do end up vlogging most of the books that I read. So anything that I mention in this video that has a vlog attached to it, I will leave the links down below so you can go check those out for more full in-depth thoughts on the books and in the moment reactions to them. But sometimes I think it's nice too to have the kind of separated feeling about the book after a couple weeks to know like how you ended up settling with the book if you still remember it sometimes when my ratings change it's good to have both sides <laughs> in april i read 11 books and i dnf'd three books so i had a total of 14 books that i picked up in the month overall it was a pretty average kind of reading month only had a couple standouts most of what i read was around a three star but we'll dig into all of that and i think today what i want to try to do is go from lowest rated to highest i've seen a couple other people do that and i always feel like it's really engaging for me to watch so i think that'll be fun to try what i worry about is that it breaks up the books that i read in vlogs but like i said i'll tell you what vlogs they're in and you can check out the links below so hopefully that experience works <laughs> but yeah let's get into it Okay, first I'm gonna start with the books that I DNF for the month because those are the books that got no writing at all since I didn't finish them. First up, we have One Night on the Island by Josie Silver. This is a romance book that came out recently that I was pretty excited for. It is a forced proximity style romance where these two people were going onto this island, both for different reasons. One was like a work trip. The other one, I don't really remember why he had to go, but they both ended up booking this cabin, but they got overbooked. And so they end up having to stay in the same cabin, one bed trope, forced proximity, stuck there together unhappy about it and a relationship ends up developing between them throughout the book. I got this one as an ebook through Libby, so through my library, and I ended up reading about 50% of the book, but I just decided to set it down because I wasn't incredibly engaged in the romance between them. I wasn't absolutely loving it. And my time with the book was running out because you only get like two weeks with a book and I was running out of time and I didn't want to force myself to try to fly through and read it if I didn't really care for it anyway. I think if this was a book that I physically owned and had physically picked up, I probably would have finished it, just stretched it out a little bit but because it was a library hold I was running out of time and I wasn't incredibly engaged with it I just decided to set it down it was fine I like the setup of it but 50% in and I wasn't really in love with the characters so didn't really compel me enough to keep me going in the story the next DNF of the month was Manhunt by Gretchen Felker Martin. This is a horror book that is about this dystopian world and there's like these gender wars going on. I don't really know. I don't even remember it. I don't remember how it was advertised. I don't really remember what I was reading, but I remember being surprised by the story that it wasn't exactly what I was expecting. And I only read like the first... I don't even know if I read 50 pages of it. I think I just read the first couple chapters and decided that it wasn't gonna be for me. I wasn't loving the tone of the story. I didn't feel like I was gonna love the dystopian nature of it. And I started seeing a lot of my friends either DNFing it or giving it less than wonderful reviews. So I just wasn't into it. I just didn't really feel like picking it up. And so I decided to DNF that one pretty quickly. And then similarly, the other book I DNF this month was An Honest Lie by Taryn Fisher. This I read for Spring Fling Ween. So you can see my little bit of an experience with that book and my Spring Fling Ween reading blog but I only read the first 50 pages of this one and then I decided to sit it down because I wasn't really compelled at all with the story so far and it was getting terrible reviews from my friends. A lot of people were saying that it's really boring, nothing happens. The whole way through it's really unsatisfying and just nobody was really liking this book and I wasn't even hooked from the beginning with the book and typically I'm at least hooked from the beginning of Taryn Fisher's books. It's just her endings which typically fall apart for me but I wasn't even engaged in the beginning of this one. Wasn't really compelled with the story. You're just following this woman who has this past where she got caught up in this cult and it's like coming back around to haunt her basically, which I've kind of read a lot at this point. So I just decided to skip out on reading that one. And I don't know if I'm gonna pick up Taryn Fisher again in the future. I never really love her books, but I keep picking them up for some reason. But after this one, I might just be done. Unless the next one sounds interesting and then I will probably just give it a try again. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> 
All right, so now we'll get into the books that I actually did read, starting with the one one star book that I had for the month. One stars are pretty rare for me, but this one was just that bad. And that is Nine Lives by Peter Swanson. This is a story that tried to be a retelling of And Then There Are None by Agatha Christie in a little bit of a different way, but it tried to just basically be that. The idea of the story is there is this letter with nine names on it and everyone whose name is on that list receives this letter and then they start getting killed one by one down the list and you don't know who's killing them or why. That concept for sure sounds interesting, but the book was such a snooze fest. <laughs> it was so boring. There were so many characters in that story. You follow all of these perspectives, all nine of them. And obviously people start getting killed off. So you start losing perspectives, but it's so hard to keep up with nine people and to know who nine people are and to care when they're dying or to get invested in them. And most of what you're seeing in their lives makes it seem like they're not great people anyways. And it's just such a slog to get through reading nine perspectives and trying to keep up with that. Also, Peter Swanson's writing this one is super, dry and clinical, like incredibly dry and clinical. It really reminds me a lot of Eight Perfect Murders. If you've read that one from Peter Swanson, this one's pretty similar in writing style to that. And I hated that one and I hated this one too. And then the worst part about this one is the plot twist. I'm not gonna reveal the plot twist, but oh my gosh, it was one of the stupidest motives that I've read for a killer, maybe ever. Terrible motive, made no sense, made the whole thing seem like a waste of time. And then had a particular element in the plot twist that I hate reading in books and Peter Swanson's done it before. He did it again in this one and I just hate it. He also just included things that he didn't need to include like, racial slurs didn't need to be in there. And just, oh my gosh, there's so many things about this book that were not good. It was just not a good experience for me. One star, do not recommend it. And I definitely am pretty sure, like 95% sure that I will not be picking up another book from Peter Swanson in the future. I have read four of his books now. I've only enjoyed one of them. And even that one I look back on and think that I kind of can't believe I enjoyed it. So I think me and Peter Swanson are breaking up. I don't think I'm gonna read his stuff anymore. Only time will tell, I guess, unless I get really convinced by another book of his coming out. But yeah, this was not good and I do not recommend picking this one up. Next up, we have my two stars for the month and I have two two stars to talk about. First up, we have The Long Weekend by Jilly McMillan. This was the first book that I read from this author. So I didn't really know what to expect, but I really was pulled in by the synopsis. I thought it seemed really intriguing. And I honestly was loving this book when I first picked it up. Like the first 50 pages were five star material. It was chef's kiss. It was beautiful. I loved it. It was amazing. The concept behind the story is that you're following these couples who are going away for a long weekend in this cabin retreat. It's actually a barn not a cabin and it's like really isolated and they're all supposed to go on friday but the men all of a sudden drop out at the last minute for friday they say we'll meet you up there on saturday they all can't go on friday for different reasons so the women just go on friday and then when they get there there is a gift waiting for them and a letter that is telling them that by the time they have gotten there one of their husbands will already be dead and then they're freaking out because they can't contact any of them because they have no service they're in the middle of nowhere it's storming they're stuck they're isolated and they just have to wait it out to the next day to see who shows up and if if their husbands are actually okay, if it was a hoax, if it was a joke, or if one of them actually was murdered. Love the premise, love the beginning of this book, love the initial plot twist in this book. There's an initial reveal around like the 100 page mark that really blew my mind. It really caught me off guard. I was really like, wow, this book could be so good. <laughs> but this book was just super slow with nothing happening. And I feel like I read a couple of books that did that this month where it was supposed to be a thriller, but I just felt like nothing thrilling was happening. And I saw other people saying that about this book in particular, The Long Weekend. I saw a Goodreads review that was like, wow, this book will be boring for 100 pages and then be really good for a minute and then boring for 100 pages, be really good for a minute, boring for 100 pages, be really good for a minute. And that is exactly how I would describe this book. Like the idea of it, the plot twist, great, but what it took to get there was really boring. There are also some elements that were introduced in the story that were giving it like the potential to be creepy or ominous or more interesting. And then I didn't feel like enough was really done with them. Just felt like those were in there as distractions and not in a good way, just in a bad way of having those distractions. So ultimately I ended up disappointed with this one. It ended up being a two star, but I do think I would pick this author up again because it did have potential and I did like the writing and I was really hooked from the beginning and I did like some of the plot twists, but the whole thing together just didn't work for me. So I definitely would pick something up from her again 
again, but I would probably try to find something that already has great reviews to go off of instead of just going in based off of the premise next time. My other two star read for the month was String Follow by Simon Jacobs. I ended up reading this one as part of my reading new horror books vlog that I did so you can check out my full thoughts there. But this one was also just pretty boring. It was definitely a character driven book, not a plot driven book. And usually I'm okay with that. But this one just felt like literally nothing happened the whole story until right at the end when it was a pretty climactic ending. I thought the writing was really good. I was definitely interested in the beginning of it. And I thought the character building was good. But I was just pretty bored with it most of the time. I had a lot of boring reads this month, like I said. In this one, you're following this group of teens who live in the suburbs in Ohio. And there is this dark force that is in the town that is trying to infiltrate the teens. That's essentially the premise. That's essentially all that happens. You're just kind of following these teens, living their lives, making some teenage mistakes, but also being influenced by this dark force at times. There's a cool writing style in this one where you read this like third person plural omniscient narrative voice that is the dark force. And it talks about like, before we could get to so-and-so, we tried to go for so-and-so first because they seemed more vulnerable because of this, this, and this. And so those parts were kind of cool, but all in all, the book didn't captivate me. It's also a little bit long. It comes in around 400 pages and yeah, it was just pretty boring overall. So ended up giving it a two star. Don't really know who I'd recommend it to, but didn't really work for me. Actually, I think I have one more two star for the month. I originally gave this one a three star, but then I just looked at it and I can't really remember anything about the book. So it's definitely gonna be a two star for me at this point, which is what I meant by how my ratings change and how it's kind of nice to be separated from the books. But the book that I'm talking about is And Then I Woke Up by Malcolm Devlin. This is a new horror sci-fi-ish novella that came out at some point in this month or maybe it's getting ready to come out. Okay, yeah, it came out April 12th. So this one is out, came out from tour. They very kindly sent me the ARC copy of this book as ebook and then a finished copy. So thank you so much to the publishers for sending this to me. But ultimately I didn't absolutely love this one like I thought I would. This book's really hard to explain. and I think it's just not really my style. I sometimes struggle with these kind of sci-fi concepts and getting interested in them. The writing style just didn't really click for me. And I spent most of the book just being pretty pretty confused and not in a way that I enjoyed. Sometimes I enjoy being confused by books, but this one I just wasn't vibing with as much. I also read this one. I read the first half and then like a week later I read the second half because I was traveling and so I got kind of caught up. So I feel like that also affected my experience with the book. I would definitely try to read it all in one go, which you definitely can because it's a little horror novella. But yeah, this one... I'm just gonna read you the synopsis because it's very hard for me to explain. It says, in a world reeling from an unusual plague, monsters lurk in the streets while terrified survivors arm themselves and roam the countryside in packs. Or perhaps something very different is happening. When a disease affects how reality is perceived, it's hard to be certain of anything. So that's the world building set up for the story is there was this disease that affects reality or how you see or perceive reality. And it's like this commentary on how the media tries to portray different things and how we become such a divided society and how both sides think either side is the monster, but really what if neither is necessarily the monster and it's just how they're being portrayed. And most of the time you can probably find more of a common ground. Like that's what it gets all into the discussion of, which I think is a cool discussion. It's a cool concept, it was confusing for me. And then the actual story of what was going on, I don't really remember many details about, like I didn't really connect to these characters and I just didn't really follow their story very well. But the story that you're following is you're following this guy named Spence, who is one of the cured living at the Ironside Rehabilitation Facility. Haunted by guilt, he refuses to face the changed world until a new inmate challenges him to help her find her old crew. But if he can't tell the truth from the lies, how will he know if he has earned the redemption he dreams of? How will he know he hasn't just made things worse? I don't know. I feel like I just didn't have the best experience with this book. I feel like it's one of those books that if a lot of people started saying they loved it, I would maybe try to reread it again all in one go, especially having more of the context of what it's about. I was just really confused <laughs> most of the time. But a couple of the blurbs on here, you've got a blurb from Stephen Graham Jones, from Mira Grant, and Alma Cotton. I like this blurb. It says a beautiful exploration of the seductive power of narrative and the toxic influence of propaganda. So it's definitely an interesting concept, but this one just didn't absolutely really work for me, but that also could be my fault. I don't know. Okay, now we can move into my three star reads for the month. First up, we have Woman Eating by Claire Coda. This is an ARC copy of this book that the publisher very kindly sent me. Thank you so much. But that's why it looks <laughs> a little strange and you see like the book 
cover on this cover. This is a story about this woman who is a vampire, half vampire, half human, I guess. And she's also biracial. So she's got this like split identity thing going on within her. And for the first time, she was having to take care of herself in the world because her mother has recently been put into this facility and can't really care for her anymore, her vampire mother. And so now she's having to learn how to fend for herself, how to source the blood that she needs to sustain herself, and also how to try to live in the human world really for the first time. Her mother really never let her get attached to other humans and now she's trying to forge her own path and figure it out. She's also an artist so she's in this like internship program where she's working with these other artists and staying in this area with them and like trying to join them at dinners and just trying to belong and fit in. Kind of a weird little book. It's mostly a literary fiction. It's definitely a character driven story. I really liked Lydia as a character. I thought she was a really interesting character. It's really funny to just kind of watch her in this buildings roman type story where she is super hungry and trying to figure it out out and watching what I eat in a day YouTube videos which is just like really funny to imagine like a modern vampire doing that and so I really liked her character but again that's kind of it in the story it's one of those kind of like sad girl stories where you're watching this woman just kind of make her way through life it's like a coming of age sort of narrative it has a really interesting atmosphere and tone to it i did end up doing a video kind of about this book it was the video that i did where i did a reading vlog in the style of an a24 film and i particularly chose this book to do that concept which i had on my mind for a while because i felt like this book just fit that concept really well this felt kind of like an a24 film where not a lot's really happening. You don't know where it's going, but you're just there for the vibes. And this is a book that is good for the vibes. So if you like stuff like that, I would definitely recommend picking it up. Ended up just being a three star for me. Nothing super special, but had a good time with it. Next up, we have Lock In by John Scalzi. This is a book that my friend Elizabeth sent to me to read. I did a whole reading vlog for this and she did a reading vlog on her channel where we did a mystery book swap with each other. Chose a book for the other that they likely wouldn't pick up and vlogged our experience reading the books. Unfortunately, neither of us really loved the books that we picked for each other. Mine did end up going a little bit more successful with my experience with Lock-In than hers did with the book I sent her, but it was a really fun experience and I'm really glad we did it um, and stepped outside of our comfort zones a little bit. This is a sort of sci-fi thriller about this world where this disease is broken out that gives people Lock-In syndrome where they basically go kind of like comatose, but they're mentally still there. And then because of that, society adapts and creates these ways for them to live outside of their bodies. You can either use these like robot things, which the more rich people do, I guess, where you get this whole robot shell and then you live your life out as a robot, or you can rent out a human and a human will let you like sink into their body for a bit and then you can live out through a human body. In this story, a crime is committed and it's through one of the people who rents their bodies. And so they're having trouble tracing like who committed the crime and why. One of the characters you're following is like this robot character who is really famous in the world because of his circumstances. He was like the first human to get into a robot body. And now he is like a detective or working with the FBI or something and working on the case as well. And then a lot of it starts infiltrating into his own life. So it's like a political detective type story, which definitely isn't my thing. And I definitely didn't love it. <laughs> it was a three star for a reason, but I appreciated the story. I thought it was a cool concept. The world building was cool. It just wasn't something that absolutely blew me away. But I think if you like sci-fi things, then you would definitely find this one interesting. It just wasn't something that I personally loved or connected to a ton. Next up, we have Insomnia by Sarah Pinborough. I just read this one for Spring Bling Halloween, so you can see it in my Spring Bling Halloween reading blog. I was very upset that this only ended up being a three star for me because I really thought it could be a five star or at least a four star, but it really did end up letting me down quite a bit. The story is about this woman who is getting ready to turn 40 and she's really afraid to turn 40 because when she was a child and her mother was turning 40, right before her mom turned 40, she started getting insomnia and kind of losing her mind, saying weird things, ended up doing this traumatic incident and has since been locked away in a psychiatric hospital facility ever since. This was another one of those books this month where I just felt bored. I felt like nothing happened. I felt like that whole vague synopsis was kind of all the book was until right at the end. So you may be wondering how this got a three star rating for me if I was pretty bored with the whole thing. A couple reasons. One, I will say it didn't feel like a bad book when I was reading it. It just felt like a boring book. And so that felt like it was more on me and my expectations for it maybe. Two, the plot twist was really, really cool. I really liked the ending of this book. I like how everything came together. I thought it was really interesting and fascinating. Not enough to redeem the entire book for me, but it was super cool and did help give it some extra points. There was a little bit of like evil villainy character over the topness at the end, which I didn't love as much, but in terms of like the overall plot twist of what's going on in the story, I thought that was really interesting and very different from what 
I typically read in thrillers, so I appreciated that. And the writing style throughout I thought was also like a good average three star. The writing was fine. I just wish more would have been happening in the plot. I wish our character would have been getting more clues, trying to figure out more, trying to actively uncover more of what was going on in the situation. What I mean with this being boring and slow and it felt like nothing was happening is the same way I felt with the Paris apartment where it just felt like the main character wasn't actively doing things to try to solve her problems. This main character felt like she was just a victim of her circumstances and not actively doing enough to try to figure out how to solve it, which is like, fine and realistic in real life. Like if you got insomnia and you've only got a two week time span in this book, maybe you haven't really done a lot, but in a story, in a thriller, in a book, like let's start doing things. Let's go talk to people sooner. Let's ask more questions. Let's go do things. Let's find out things people are hiding from you. Do something. And I just felt like so much of this book was just like nothing happening until right there at the end. So that's why I ended up only getting a three star from me. You're probably disappointed. No one can be more disappointed than I am that it wasn't amazing for me, but I would still recommend picking it up because a lot of people are liking it. I just personally didn't love it as much as everybody else. Next up, we have a, another little novella. We had to remove this post by Hannah Bervoitz. I read this one for Spring Halloween. It turns out it's more of a literary fiction, but it does have some kind of dark horror type elements in it, but more like psychological real life horror, not supernatural paranormal horror. This is an ARC copy that I won in a Goodreads giveaway, the first Goodreads giveaway I've ever won. It was really exciting, <laughs> but I'll pop up the real cover of the book too, the final cover, so you can recognize this book if you've maybe seen it somewhere. But this is a story about this woman who is a content moderator for a social media platform, and she sees some really horrific things in her time there. The whole story is told as she is writing a letter to a lawyer who is getting pulled into this lawsuit that is going on with the company right now because the company treated their employees terribly, and it's just getting pulled in this big lawsuit and the lawyer's been trying to get her involved to testify but she won't and she's finally writing this letter to say like here's my experience of what happened and that's it that's all I'm telling you and then leave me alone. So you're following her tell the story of when she first applied for this job when she started working there what she was doing in her real life around the time and you just see this progression of how seeing the really dark gruesome things that people try to post on the internet that end up having to be moderated can impact you in a detrimental way and it creates this larger commentary around social media what we can and cannot post on social media and the kind of ridiculousness behind first of all the rules we have to create and second of all the specificity of some of the rules we create and how even that just feels ridiculous at times, what you can and can't say, what you can and can't post. And then also just the concept of how, what you're exposed to on social media can be really detrimental to you and you may not even be realizing it. I thought this book was an interesting concept that opened interesting discussions. It made me start thinking about things in a different way that I'm not really thinking about often when it comes to social media. So I thought it was an interesting concept, but ultimately the book didn't do a ton for me. The story didn't do a ton within what you actually get in a story. It just made me kind of start thinking about these concepts. So I just gave it a three-star rating. I thought it was fine. Pick it up if it sounds interesting to you, if it's a concept you want to think about more, but I didn't get a ton out of the actual story. Next up for my only three and a half star rating for the month, we have The Patient by Jasper DeWitt. I read this one for Spring Fling Halloween, so you can see more of my thoughts in the vlog. This is a little horror novella that is about this psychiatrist who is going to work or this hospital and it is told through his perspective writing these like blog posts on this forum talking about this wild experience that he's had working for that hospital when he gets there he finds out about this patient that nobody really wants to deal with there they keep him very secluded no one's been able to treat him he's been there for 20 years they can't diagnose him they can't treat him and anyone who really works with him ends up dying pretty much. So he seems like a very dangerous patient, but the psychiatrist coming in is like, I'm convinced that I can figure this out. Let me on the case. Let me be his doctor. Let me work with him. And so he starts working with him. Horrific things go on from there. <laughs> I'm always a bit wary of horror that intersects with mental health in this way in the psychiatry field with the potential of like demonizing people with mental illnesses or like the psychopath. So I was definitely wary of that going into this one. I ultimately ended up feeling okay with how the story went. I didn't feel like it was necessarily doing anything harmful for dialogue around mental health because of the direction that the story takes. And so I felt okay with it. I ended up giving the book a three and a half star because it wasn't amazing, but it was a good enough time. It was a good short, fast little horror novella read for a readathon. I thought it was scary. I thought it was interesting. I liked the way it was written and that it was written in the format of these blog posts just because that made it feel kind of more real. And I thought that was interesting. It's definitely one that I would recommend. It's not one of my top horror novellas I've ever read, but I did have a good enough time with it. Gave it a three and a half star. Would recommend picking it up if you got the chance.
Next up, we have my only four star for the month, and that was My Dearest Darkest by Kayla Cottingham. I read this one for my reading blog where I read new horror books, so you can check out more about it there. This is a YA sapphic gothic dark academia supernatural story that was such a good time if you like ya horror then definitely recommend picking this one up i will say it did read a little bit on the younger side of ya than what i'm typically used to in reading ya horror so just know it's a little bit more like wholesome maybe than some other ya horror is there's definitely gory and graphic things in here but the overall tone of the book felt a little lighter than i'm used to but in this story you're following this girl named finch who is going to this new academy right before she gets admitted she ends up having this accident with her parents a car accident and her parents end up dying and she also ends up drowning but somehow she comes back to life and so she ends up going to the academy and in this town there's like all this supernatural lore around the town like people just say they see ghosts people just feel drawn to this town so there's that kind of weirdness going on and then she meets this girl selena who kind of like rules the academy she's the cool girl and they end up having to work together on this project and they kind of like clash each other a little bit because of an incident that happens before Finch starts at the school. But ultimately they end up developing a little romance and they also end up getting pulled into this creepy thing that's going on at the school, which I don't think is revealed in the synopsis. Oh no, it is revealed in the synopsis, but I didn't know this. And I feel like it's good to not know all the details of what goes on in this book, but there's this like supernatural creature ordeal happening at the school that is endangering their friends and they have to kind of work together to try to figure out how to stop that creature. I had a really good time with this one. I really can't even remember my exact complaints that knocked it down to a four star instead of a five star. So now that I've separated some time from it, I'm just like, yeah, this one's great, definitely pick it up. But um, probably because it's like a little bit of a younger written thing that knocked it down a little bit for me personally. But like I said, my full thoughts are in that reading blog if you wanna hear everything I had to say about the book, but really, really enjoyed it. And I think if you like why horror, then you should definitely pick it up. And then finally, my only five star of the month was Sundial by Katrina Ward. I read this one for the horror vlog as well, so you can check out what I think about it there. But I really, really ended up enjoying this one even more than I enjoyed The Last House on Needless Street from this author. And I was really surprised because I thought I honestly might end up not liking this one, mainly because it was set in the desert and that just sounded really boring to me for some reason. But I actually really ended up liking this one. You're following this woman who has two daughters and she starts getting worried for the safety of the youngest daughter because the older daughter is kind of creepy, doing some creepy things and kind of endangering her younger sister. And so she decides to take her older daughter away back to the town where she grew up in Sundial. And once they get there, she starts acting a little creepy and you follow both her perspective and the daughter's perspective. And it feels like one of them may not make it out alive. <laughs> this is one of the best horror books that I've read in a while. I was really captivated by it. I was really loving the writing style. I loved how we get so much of the history of the mom. You learn a lot about her past growing up in this town and what was going on with her and I just found that so interesting. I loved the twist that was implemented in the story. It was so unique and I just thought it was so cool. I know some people are saying this book is boring or confusing. I feel like those are the two main things that I've heard. I personally didn't find this book confusing at all. I feel like I was following along really well the whole time. I did both physical and audio and kind of switched around throughout those formats and I really liked it. I found it really fast paced, intriguing and easy to understand from my experience with the book, but I know it's kind of like hit or miss for some people. So you may not end up loving it as much as I do, but personally, I really love this one. Also people talk about the animal cruelty in this one. If that is something you're sensitive to, like if you absolutely don't want to read anything to do with anything happening to animals in any way whatsoever, then I would say skip this one. But I personally didn't come away from this book feeling like I read a lot of gruesome, gory things happening to animals. If you really want to know like, even just the subject of how animals are involved in the story, which isn't necessarily a spoiler, but I could see some people not wanting to know. Feel free to DM me on Instagram and I will let you know kind of the idea of what's going on with the animals in this if you're trying to figure out if it's something that you want to read or not. But it personally didn't bother me, but also I can read like actual really intense animal cruelty and it doesn't necessarily bother me. I feel like that's a weird thing to say, but like, it's just not one of my personal triggers. I can't read abusive men, but I can read like animal cruelty and I don't support animal cruelty, obviously, but I can read it. 
without having to stop the book. Whereas abusive men, I'm like, absolutely not. I don't wanna read that anymore. I hope I don't sound, you know, any weird way saying that, but I feel like, you know what I mean? If you read horror books, you know what I mean? Like there's some things you can just handle reading better than other things. Like we read serial killers. We read people getting murdered. Obviously that doesn't even condone that. It's just something like that you can have in your media without having to stop the media. But yeah, anyways, if you wanna know anything about this so that you can get some content warnings or trigger warnings, I'm happy to chat about it in my Instagram DMs. My Instagram is just Ashley's Little Library. So hit me up there if you wanna talk more about this book but yeah i personally really loved it and it's definitely going to be a top book of the year for me so that is it for all the books that i read in april i had a pretty decent month definitely did a lot of reading with some readathons and reading blogs mixed in there had an obvious standout of the month with sundial by katrina ward but yeah let me know in the comments down below how your reading month went what did you read what did you really love have you read any of the books that i talked about let me know what you think about them as well and if you want to leave an emoji down in the comments so let me know that you got to the end of the video we can leave Let's do the like rain emojis. Anything that is like rain, like an umbrella or the cloud raining because April showers bring May flowers. <laughs> and that is all I could think of for April this month. But that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next video. Bye.